Hi class, uh, in this video I will be going over the uh, last bit of Firebase stuff before we move on to our midterm and final. Um, so we're going to look at querying the database. Uh, and what a query is, is essentially asking for the, the database for a specific piece of information. So um, we're already kind of doing that with our uh, user profile. And so we're just going to do that a couple more times to get um, individual pages for uh, the posts of a single user, um, the a single post by itself, and a list of the users on the on the site. So um, there's no assignment associated with this one. Um, I want you guys to start thinking about the midterm this week. Um, so I'm going to post another video uh, after this one, um, kind of about how to create the midterm. And we'll have some time to work on that because that's a big part of sort of planning out what you're going to work on for the final. Um, we have a little bit of a condensed schedule because of uh, our uh, distance learning status, but um, I think we'll have plenty of time uh, to uh, work on um, our projects. So in this video, um, I'm just going to go over adding some different functionality to the site. Uh, there's no assignment uh, associated with this, so I'm going to explain what I'm doing as I go so that uh, hopefully you'll be able to understand it and follow along. Um, uh, but I basically just want you to add these things into your site to kind of add some functionality. Um, so I'm going to get started. I'm going to go ahead and open up GitHub Desktop as usual. And switch over to my MMP350 uh, repository and then just make sure I'm up to date and then open up in Sublime Text. Um, and so I'm gonna create a new project here. So I'm gonna go to Show in Finder, go to MMP350. Um, the last uh, folder that I made is this responsive folder. Um, so I'm gonna make a new one and uh, I'm just gonna call this one the final project because um, basically from here, everything that you add going forward should be contributing to your final. Um, the final is just a, uh, a version of the website that we've been creating where you're gonna add your own theme, um, update some things to kind of create your final color scheme and layout and everything like that. Um, so I'm going to make a copy of this folder and I'm just going to rename this final. Um, so this will be the final project, um, but we're going to work on this for the rest of the semester. Um, so I'm going to add a few things in here. Um, they're actually going to be very similar and I'll talk about how they work as I go through it. Um, but uh, we're going to add some different functionality um, to different parts of the site. So I'm going to open up the console as well in Firebase so I can take a look at the data that we're working with um, and go to database. So uh, we're going to be querying the database, which means asking it for specific pieces of information. That's one thing that we do when we get the user profile is we find a user according to the UID. And that's very similar to how we're going to query other parts of the database. Um, we also have this post section, so we're going to be querying the users and the posts as well. Um, and that's pretty much everything that we have in the database. So I'm going to go ahead and create a link on my home page for the final project. And so I'm just going to add a new list item here with an anchor tag, and here's final. And that's all we need to do, just say this is going to be the final project. And then I'm going to go to tools and start the Sublime server. And then I'll go over to uh, my Chrome window and open a new tab to localhost 8080. Go to MMP350 and then click on Final. Um, right now it looks basically the same, uh, but we're going to add some stuff in here to make some changes. So I'm going to close out this page and go to Final. And uh, we'll st we can start with index.html. And the first thing that I want to do is I want my user to be able to open up individual posts. Um, so we're going to add some JavaScript here to enable that. Uh, if we look at the front page of our site, um, you can see that uh, basically we see each individual post, but we see all of the posts on one page. And so if my user wanted to share a single post, if they thought there was something funny or an interesting image or something like that, if they wanted to be able to share that specific post, they would need to have a link to the post. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that you see that happen. 
Um, we could create a link icon or we could just make the whole thing a link. Depending on how you prefer to use it, you might try adding an icon. So I'm just gonna add a link text to the end of the post, um, but you could also uh, add it to the post itself. You could add it to the, the post text um, or the post image, wherever you wanna put it, you can make basically anything on the post interactive. Um, so in order to do that, there's two parts. First, we need to create the link from this page to the page that we wanna open, and then we're gonna create that page. Um, so we'll start just by creating the link. And so remember that all of our posts are generated by this display posts function right here. Um, so we'll just take, uh, we'll open up the JavaScript and go to display posts. And so we can see everything that's happening in here. Um, and what we'll do is we'll just add uh, a link uh, based on the post uh, ID. Um, so we're gonna create a page kind of like when we click on the edit profile button you can see that it goes to profile.html and then we have the uh, query uh, and the UID and then the user's ID here. We're gonna do a similar thing with the post so that we can see an individual post on the site. Um, so I'm gonna go back to the home page. So I'm just gonna add a new uh, part to my post and this is usually referred to as a permalink. So it's a link to, it's a permanent link to the post itself. So I'm gonna call this um, adding the perma link. Okay, and so for this, we're gonna create a new element just like we do with our text up here. So I'm gonna call this the link. I'm gonna say constant link equals js.createl. And that's using one of our helper functions to create an element. And so the first argument for our create element function is what type of element we're making. This is gonna be a link, so in order for it to work, we need to make it an anchor tag. So it's just an A. And then we need to give it a class. So I'm gonna call this the permalink as our class if we wanna style it later. Um, and then the text that we want the link to show is the last argument. So I'm just gonna put link here. Um, or you could also put something like uh, share might make sense here. Um, I'm just gonna put link to be very literal. And so then we need to actually just tell the link where to go. So we can set the href in JavaScript by just saying link.href. And so what we're gonna do is uh, we're going to go to a page called uh, post.html. So that's for a single post. And we need to add a little bit to the end here. So it's gonna have a query at the end. And then we just need to give it the ID of the post. And so we'll say ID equals and then add post ID to the end here. And so that'll make each one of our links go to a different post. Um, and that will come from the database with this post ID value. Um, and so once we have that, we just have to add it to our post. So I'm gonna add it here. I'm gonna say post.append child and add the link. And then this may end up being somewhere, we can take a look at what this looks like and then we could move it around. So the link is in the upper left-hand corner because it comes after the image. So we might wanna put it before the image. Um, because our post now is flex display, I could do that using flex rules, but I can also do that more easily by just moving this part of my JavaScript before the image. So now it'll add the link before the image. Okay, so that looks all right, but it still looks a little weird because of the flex display. So let's see if I can fix that. I'm gonna to go to posts and go to the post. And so I have my post text, then I have my permalink, and then I have my image. Okay, so this may be a case where the flex box is not exactly what I want. Um, let's see, this is a flex box. So I could maybe use a grid here. As I start to m add more information, I might wanna use a grid. But since I do already have the flex box, let's try moving the link back down to below the image. And then I'll just turn on flex wrap. So I'll go to CSS, go to post.css, and we might need to, as our site gets more complex, be editing the JavaScript and the CSS at the same time. Um, so let's just change the flex wrap to wrap. See how that looks? Okay, so then let's see our post text. 
Okay, so we can fix that by adding flex one to the post text. So we can say that we don't want this to take up any more space than it needs. And so then we can also maybe break on the link. So I'm going to say dot perma link and say flex basis is 100%. So that'll create a line break before the link. Okay, but now we see the padding is off there. So I'm going to add in a post info. So you guys should have this already because of your um, updates with the username and date. So I'm going to add that in here. So I'm going to have my text and my image and then I'm going to add the post info. So I'm going to say constant info is js.createl and this is a div and it's the post dash info uh, and there's no text here and we're just going to say post dot append child info and then I'm going to append the link to the info instead of the post so then we can style the info as a sort of inner wrap and so I can add the post info here and make that break and then I can add some padding like we have for the post text as well okay so now that will look more similar we don't really need that all of that padding now so let's just add the padding on the sides and I'll say zero for the top and bottom and then actually we kinda need to let's see Let's just go ahead and say the padding on the bottom of the text is zero and the padding on the top of the post info is zero. Okay, so you guys can handle your layout however you want here, but this is pretty good so far. Hopefully it'll, it may get more complicated in which case I'll add more updates, but here we have the post, the post text, the image, and then the post info down here. So now if we click on this link, you can see that the post for each link is different. So here's one link, here's another link. And just like we did with our user profile, we can use that link to uh, create a, uh, a page where only that post shows up. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this for now as is. I'm going now to um, create this page. So here's post.html. I'm just gonna base that on the index page so that we don't have to copy a bunch of stuff. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna duplicate index.html. Um, you can also do a copy and paste and then rename it. So I'm gonna call this post.html. Uh, and we're gonna have to change a couple of things in here. So I'm gonna go to post.html. And so here where we have let load posts, so this is where we're gonna make the main change. So we're no longer gonna be loading all of the posts. So I'm just gonna comment that out for now. And we're just gonna be loading one post. Um, and we don't need the publish section anymore. So I'm just gonna delete that. Um, we can leave this posts div here. That'll still be useful even though there's more than one post. Uh, it is still where the posts go, so we don't really need to delete that. And then I can remove this publish script, so we won't be publishing anything on this page. So now if I refresh this page, uh, we basically just see the shell of the site, and it's waiting for us to add the main content, which is just one post. But everything else on this page will still apply, like the CSS and everything like that. So it's really just a couple of simple JavaScript lines, and then we're done. So let's take a look at that. So we just need to get the ID of the post from here. Um, and this is pretty simple. It's using the same method that we use to get the profile ID. So there's a thing in our uh, JavaScript called the location that just tells us where we are in the browser. And then we can get the search from location.search. Okay, so that gives us everything after the question mark. And then we know that the equal sign is used to delineate the search query from the ID value. 
So we can say location.search and then we can use the split function to split at the equal sign. And then that'll give us everything on the left at the equal sign and everything on the right. And we, what we want is this ID. So we'll use the one index here. So we'll say search.split on equals at one. And that gives us the ID. So if I copy this code, I'm just gonna throw this directly into this script tag here. Uh, again, this is only gonna happen on this page, so I don't need this to be in a separate script tag. So I'm gonna say the uh, post ID is location.search.split on equals at one. Uh, and so that'll give me um, the location. And then I'm just gonna load that post. So instead of fb.loadposts, we have another um, helper function called load post, which just gives one post. And I'm just gonna do post ID. Um, so you might be thinking, why don't I just put this directly into the argument? Um, that would be totally valid. I could do it that way, but just to kind of simplify our syntax, I'm gonna save the value first and then load it. Um, so hopefully that'll work. Everything else should be set up. And there we go. So there's our single post. Um, so if you wanna share one post, you can just click on that link and copy the link and then you know email it to somebody or tweet it or uh, wherever else you might share a link. And then that will only ever go to this one post. So that's how an individual post page works. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is if we wanted to see all of the posts by a single user. Um, my page right now doesn't actually display the user name. Um, that was one of the homeworks that you guys did. So I'm just gonna add that real quick and then I'm gonna turn that into a link as well. Um, so it's gonna be very similar to the process that we just did with the um, single post, but in this case, we'll just be looking at the post by one user. So first we need to add a link to that user. Um, so I'm gonna add another link inside of my info. Um, and actually, I'm gonna make this show up before the link to the post. Um, so I'm gonna say uh, my author, I'm gonna say constant author. And so I'm gonna say, this is create L. And this is gonna be another anchor tag. Um, and this is the post author. And I'm just gonna use the username for this. So I'm gonna say user info dot display name. So that's gonna be our text, user info dot display name. And so I'm gonna add the author to our post, um, but I'm gonna add it to the info uh, section. So I'm gonna say info dot append child author. Okay, so now we see all of the authors. I'm gonna have to style this a little bit um, to make this work. Um, but we can see, you know, Banana wrote those texts and then other authors who wrote other texts. Um, so we'll add some styles in a second, but let's make the link work first. So um, the author is also going to be a link. So just like we did with our link down here, we're gonna add an href. So I'll say author.href. And I'll just say, um, so this one is gonna to go to a user page. Uh, so it'll be user.html. And this is different from the profile page. So you could combine those two, but what we'll do here is you'll have a, an author page uh, where you'll be able to see all the posts that they wrote. Um, and maybe we can also display the user information on the author page. Um, or we could have a link to the profile page. Um, so we need the user ID in order to load this. So we'll say ID equals, um, and then we're just gonna say, this is actually gonna come from the uh, post data, which is how we get our user info in the first place. So the post data uh, dot UID. Um, and I'll call this user ID just to make it more specific. And so again, that's a page that doesn't exist yet, but we will create it in a minute. Um, so this is adding the author link. And so let's also style this. So we have the post author there, which is the class we're using here. Um, and right now we just need to uh, give it like a little margin so that it has some space. So we'll say margin uh, to the left is one EM. And actually we need to go to the right. 
Okay, so you could do a lot of, of other things to style that. Um, one thing that you might want to add is like a, a line before that that says buy or something like that. So you could say something like buy plus user display name. Um, but then that will make the buy part of the link. If you're okay with that, you can leave that the way it is. If you want the buy not to be part of the link, then we need to add it before the link. Um, so you could do that in a few different ways. Um, we could say info and we could just say um, append child and we could just put uh, a little buy thing right there. So we could say js.createl and we could make a span. So a span is a nice uh, inline element that we can use for some text. We could call this the by uh, line or author by as the class in case we want to style it. And then we could just put the word by uh, and we could either style it to have a space or we could add a space here. Um, and that should give us the by. Okay, so there we got the by. And so I used a little shortened syntax here. I just created the element and then immediately put it into a pen child. Since I don't have to add like a link or anything or append other stuff to this, I don't really need a reference just to this span. Um, so I'm just gonna leave that right there. Okay, so we have our link to our author page. And if I wanna click on banana, it'll take me right there. So let's create that page. Um, so we're going to have to open up, we're going to have to create a new page, pretty much the exact same thing as our posts page, uh, but just with a new query. So we're querying the database in different ways. Um, so getting the posts by a single user um, is a little trickier uh, than just getting a single post. Um, so we have to know which the user is, uh, and then we're going to use another uh, helper function to get us that user. So the first thing I'll do is duplicate my um, post page. So I'll do command D and I'm going to call this user.html. And so now we'll see that reload, but we're going to get an error because our UID here is not a post. So it's going to have a hard time loading that. So you, we're going to see that error here. Um, it can't find this. Um, so let's update that. So on our user.html, we really don't have to change that much. One of the good things about using uh, multiple JavaScript files like we're doing here is that most of these files do more or less the same thing, um, but we can populate them with different uh, things. So now we're really looking for the user ID um, or UID, so I'll just put UID here, but it's actually the exact same code as on our post page. Um, and so now instead of just loading a post, we're going to load user posts. Okay, so this is a very similar function, but um, in our helpers, but it just uses the UID and loads their posts instead of the post itself. Okay, so I actually had written a different function name here, but this one is a lot more consistent. So I am going to upload a new, uh, another updated helpers file, um, but that's okay. So I'll put a link to that in the YouTube. Um, anyway, so this is working now. So you'll see that it loads only the posts by the banana user. Um, and so those are all of the posts by the banana user. So if I go here back to the home page and I click another user, now we'll see only those posts by that user. Um, and if I find another user uh, like this one, then we'll see those posts. Um, so we can query all of the posts by a single user. Um, and if you're interested in what that looks like, I'll just talk about that real quick because we haven't talked a lot about the Firebase, um, how this stuff works, but you can see in the helpers file down here, load user posts. It's really quite simple. We're basically just saying uh, order by child user ID equal to UID. Um, so that's the function in Firebase that basically says only take the child of the post section if they equal the specific user ID. Um, so that's pretty much all that's helping, happening there in the helpers uh, file that's different from how the general load post function works. So that's our user page. Um, we can also make the image a link, which might be fun. So if I go back uh, to the home page, so right now I can click on banana, but if I click on this image, Nothing happens. 
So if I want to make my image interactive, I could do a couple things. I could create a uh, link wrapper, like an anchor tag wrapper for the image. I could also just use some JavaScript. I could say user image and I could add uh, a click function here. So I could say dot on click and then give that a function. So I'm just listening if the user clicks on the image. Um, and then I can actually direct my site to the user page. So I can say location.href. So this is a little bit different than our author.href, um, but it's gonna have the same effect. So our image, uh, we can't add a link directly to the image, but we can make it interactive with JavaScript. Um, so now if I click on the image, we'll go to that user's page. Um, so another thing that we could do is go to their profile page. Uh, and I, all I would have to do for that to work, hopefully, is just substitute profile for user. And so now if I click here, so now we see their profile. Um, so you could do that in a lot of different ways. You could add another link. You could um, you know, add the user information down here if you wanted as well. Um, but just to kind of simplify things, we can add this here. Uh, and we can also add like a hover state for this to make it clear. So let's add some CSS. If I go to um, post.css and here's my profile image. So I could make it clear that it's interactive by saying the cursor is pointer. Okay, so the image by default is not a link, but if we say that the cursor is the pointer, then it'll act like a link as well. So we have the uh, link to the user uh, posts and the uh, profile. Um, we can also add a link that just shows all of the users. You might be interested to see all of the users in the site. Um, so that's something that we can add maybe to the menu. Um, we don't really have a menu exactly, but um, we can just throw it uh, somewhere. Um, so maybe I'll put it, um, let's see, I'll go to index.html and it could go in the user info could go under the title. Let's see how it looks under the title. I'll just put an anchor tag here and say uh, users.html and just say view uh, site users. Oops. Okay, that actually doesn't look that bad. Um, you know, obviously there might be better places to put that, but we don't really have that in depth of a menu here. So let's just use this. So uh, we need to create this page. So it's gonna be very similar um, to all of our other pages, but the information that we're displaying is a little bit different. So let's see how we can do that. So we need to get a list of our users first and then just display them on the page. So let's make a copy of our uh, index page. So I'm gonna go to index.html and duplicate this and just call this users.html. Um, so I'm gonna get rid of these guys for a second and uh, just go to users.html. So now I have user uh, singular for a single user and then I have users with a S at the end, plural, to show multiple users. So um, most of this stuff is gonna say the same. I can remove the publish post section as usual and I can remove display posts. So I'll get rid of that and remove publish. And then I actually can create a new JavaScript file here because um, right now the users are only gonna appear on this page, but it's conceivable that I might wanna display them somewhere else. So I'm gonna create a new script for this one. It's gonna be pretty short, but I'll just put it in a new file. So it would be js slash users.js. And it's gonna be very similar to display posts, but we'll be displaying users instead. So I'm gonna get rid of this post section and just call this div ID equals users. So we have a place to put our users. And then I'll create a new file and save this as uh, final JS users.js. Um, and so we're gonna get all of the users, so we don't really care. There's no like query that we have to do. Um, but we do need to get the, the, the users. We have a Firebase helper for that. It's fb.getusers. And we're gonna give this what's called a callback function. So sometimes the, the function will call itself, but for this one, it, we can give it a function called display user to display each individual user. So 
Um, that way we don't have to react to all the users at once. Um, so we're going to create that function next. So defunction, the function display user. Uh, and the, the helper's file is going to give us some, some data for this. So the first thing it gives us is the user ID. Um, it also gives us the display name. Um, and then it gives us the bio and um, an image URL if it exists. So there is an optional parameter at the end of this, which is the user info. And that's going to contain the display name, the bio, the image URL, but it's also going to contain anything that you added uh, in the uh, user profile assignment, just so you can have access to those things as well. Um, so I didn't add anything there. Uh, I didn't do that assignment, but um, you guys, if you did do that assignment, you can also access those other values from the user info. Um, so I'll leave there, that there just as an example, um, but I'm not going to be using that in this uh, beginning example. So this function is going to work really similar to the way display posts work. Um, so I'm going to keep that open just as an example. So the first thing that we do is we create a container for the individual post. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing for the user. So I'm going to say constant um, user container, or let's just call this user div, uh, is js.create element. And it's a div, and the, the class is just user. Um, so we're going to use that to style it in a moment. So this is my uh, user container element. Um, and we're just going to go ahead and append that to our users div. So I actually needed to get a reference to this. I'm going to put it up here because I only need to do it once. So I'm going to say constant um, users div. So that is going to be this div right here in my users.html. So that's going to be uh, js.getl. So I'm using get L because I'm getting a reference as opposed to create L where I'm creating HTML. I'm just getting a reference to the HTML. Um, and the ID for that one is just users. So this users div is going to reference this div right here. And this new user div for a single user um, is just going to be for one user. And I'm going to add it right here. So I'm going to say users div dot append child user div. Okay, so it's a little confusing here, but essentially users with an S, plural, is all of the users. They're going to go into this container div here. And user singular is each individual user that we add as we as our Firebase goes through those users. So users div dot append child user div. And then we'll add everything else to the user div uh, container. Um, so let's add the user name. Um, so we'll add the display name here. So we're just going to make a new element. I'll call it uh, username. So I need a different uh, variable name. I can't repeat uh, display name. So I'm just going to call it username. Uh, and so we're going to create another element. Um, it's also a div. And the class is username. For this one, we're actually going to use a link. So let's make this an anchor tag. And let's give it the text uh, display name. OK, so we'll be able to click on it. We can style this later. Um, and actually, since this is a, a CSS thing, I want to use CSS syntax with the dash. And so then we can say user name.href. So we'll create the link. OK, and it's the exact same link that we had before. It's going to go to their user page. Um, so user.html, question mark, UID. And then we'll just get the UID, or sorry, UID equals. And I'll use single quotations because that's what I've been using. It's good to have consistency. And that's just going to grab the UID from up here. So we'll say UID. So that'll make the uh, username interactive. So that should work already. Let's take a look. Uh, let's see. OK, we have some users, but we haven't appended it yet. So we see the user there. That's this part. But we need to append it. So we need to say user div dot append child user name. OK, very cool. So we can see all the users, and we can already click on them. So there's banana. Uh, there's QT. OK, there's a bunch of other users that we can see. All right, so let's add a little bit more information about each user. Um, so you can really add as much or as little as you want to. We can add the bio. 
Again, not every user is gonna have to buy, have a bio, so we need to ask if it exists yet. So we say if bio, and then we can just make a new div for the bio. So constant bio div equals uh, js dot create element, and this is gonna be a div, and the class will be user dash bio, and then the text will just be the bio that we get from the display user function. And once we create that div, we have to add it. So we'll say user div dot append child bio div. And now we should see a bio. And so we can see not everybody has a bio, only the users who created um, a bio will see the bio. And we'll update this with some, some CSS in a moment. So then we can also add the image if the image exists. So we'll say if image URL, we'll add an image so we'll say constant user image is a new image. Okay, so the image works a little bit different than an element, so we're not gonna use the create element here. And we're just gonna say user image.source gets image URL, and then we'll append that. So we'll say user div dot append child user image. Okay, so users that have images will see the image. Um, so we should see more images there. Um, right now we just see banana, which is my user. Uh, so let's go back to users. We can style this as well. So let's keep going. If we wanted to, we can also add a link to the profile. Um, so let's add this actually before the bio. Uh, so we can say constant profile link. And this is another uh, anchor tag and so this is the user profile link um, and we'll just say for the text we'll just say view profile so the username if you click on it it'll show you their posts if you click on the profile link then it'll go to their profile so profile link dot uh, href is the same thing as this one except we're going to go to profile instead of user so that's kind of the convenient part about using Firebase is that we can get the different types of information and everything kind of ends up looking more or less the same. So we're kind of repeating these same patterns. Um, and then we'll just add that on, user div dot append child profile link. Okay, so now if I want to view uh, Banana's posts, I just click on the username. If I want to view their profile, I can click on view profile. And I should probably add a link in the profile to view the posts, but we don't have to worry about that right now. Um, so let's go back. So let's style this up a little bit just so it doesn't look like this. Um, so we can go to our users and I'm gonna choose the banana one because that's the only one with a image. Um, so let's just add some basic styles here. I'll probably use some of the same styles that we have in post.css. Um, so I'm gonna, open up style.css and create uh, a style sheet just for the user. So I'll say user.css. Um, and so then I'm gonna make a new file, save as uh, user.css. And I'm just gonna delete some of these old files that I don't need anymore. So keep in mind that you only want one of each of our files in the CSS folder for the final project. So I'm gonna open up user.css and then I'm gonna make a split screen and I'm gonna open up uh, post.css because I wanna use some of the same uh, CSS styles. So for the user, I'm just gonna copy all of this directly right in there. Uh, so we're just gonna use the same border, border style, radius, add a margin, all this stuff is still gonna be useful. Um, and we'll try the display flex as well. Okay, so that looks okay. We're definitely missing something. The border width, border style, border radius. I guess the post must be getting some of their styles from somewhere else. Let's take a look. I'm just gonna open another tab so I can look at them at the same time. Uh, 
So here's posts, here's post. So the border color comes from dot post, which is on color.css. Okay, so I'm gonna open up color.css. Okay, so I have some rules for my post, so I'm gonna add in my user here as well. Okay, that looks better. Uh, so why isn't my padding working? Do I have padding? No. Oh, because the padding I added to the text. So I'm just going to add padding to the whole user. So I'm going to say padding is 1EM. Okay, so that gives it a little more room. Um, I'm going to make the bio sit on its own page. So that's pretty easy uh, with CSS. I'm just going to say dot user dash bio and say uh, flex dash basis is uh, 100%. Okay, so now we get the username and view profile and then the bio. And for some reason, the bio is not getting styled with the typography. So I'm going to go over to typography. And okay, we can see that we need to add dot user here. Okay, that looks better. And let's give the bio its own padding. So let's just say the padding is 1EM on the top and bottom, zero otherwise. Okay, that looks better. And then our one user with an image down here, um, that actually doesn't look so bad. Um, it might be nice to have the image on top actually. So let's see if we can do that. Let's just say if there's an image, that's the first thing that we're gonna add even before the display name. So we can use the JavaScript order to change the order of our HTML. We could also do that in CSS, but it's pretty simple to do it here. Okay, so now we have banana and view profile, and I can make the image a link just like I did before. Um, so let's just say user image on click is a function. And if they click, we'll just go, we'll move the whole browser location.href over to the user page. Okay. And we just want to make sure that the user knows that that's happening. So I'm going to go and say dot user image. Um, I'm going to go back to single column view to simplify this a bit. So here's Oh, I didn't actually add a class here. Hmm. How did I do that in display posts? Oh, I actually did use create L image. Okay, so let's do that. I'm just gonna copy this because it's exactly the same variable name and just paste it right here. Okay, just as good. And so now we should, okay, there's the user image. Um, hmm. But it's taking on now the style of the post profile image, which is not what I want. What I want is just user image. There we go. Okay, so then let's add user image cursor is pointer. And we could round the corners just to kind of make it match everything else. So I could say border radius is uh, 0 0.5 EM. Okay, so that's not too bad. Um, if we click banana or view profile or the image will go somewhere. And then we can click on banana. Uh, we can click on the link for this one post. Go to the user, go back to the home page, visit site users. Okay, so now we can do a lot of different stuff and kind of see different parts of the site. So that's pretty good. Um, so we've got some different functionality. Um, I just have one last bit, uh, which is adding tags. So one of the things that Firebase does is it, uh, or at least the Firebase helpers function will add tags. And so the last page that we're gonna add is very similar to the, to the user's uh, post page, but for specific tags. So we can tag different types of content. So let's see what a tag actually looks like if I, go to my compose post and say, this is a post with a tag. 
and I'm also going to tag the word banana. If I publish that, you'll see that in the database, um, so I'm gonna go back to the database and go to posts and then scroll down to the bottom. So when I use that hashtag, it actually creates those tags in the database. So you can see that right here, banana is true, tag is true. Um, so if we use get tags, it will filter uh, specific tags um, from our page. So what we can do, we first need to make these tags uh, interactive. Um, so I have a lot of stuff open. I'm gonna close this stuff real quick and uh, go back to index.html. So here's our display posts. Um, this is what generates all of our posts. Um, so what we need to do is we need to make our text interactive. Um, and so our main text is right here. Uh, and what we can do is use a Firebase helper to generate those tags. So I'm just going to create a new variable called tagged. And essentially what this will do is it'll send our post data to the Firebase helpers. Um, and there's a function called tag text that will return either uh, the regular text or um, just the, the uh, text with tags. Okay, so we're gonna give that the post data. And then uh, instead of putting in the post data dot text into our text uh, element, we're just gonna put the tagged uh, variable. So now we can see those tags get at, created, get turned into links. So if I click on the banana tag, um, this hasn't been created yet, but we'll make that. We'll go to a specific page that loads anything with the tag banana. Add that page real quick. It's gonna be really, really similar um, to our uh, user page, which adds uh, a bunch of posts. So I'm gonna duplicate that. I'm gonna to go to user.html and just duplicate it and call this tag.html. Um, so, you know, this is just if you wanna add tags uh, into your project. In the tag page, uh, it's a little bit different because the uh, tag is now, the query is this tag equals banana, but this code works exactly the same way. So I'm gonna leave this and I'm gonna close that and open up tag.html and scroll down here. So I can leave everything here the same. Um, I'm just gonna change this line. So this location.search, this still works the same way because our tag is still just a search query. Um, so I'll just change the variable name to tag just so we know what it is. Um, and then instead of load user posts, uh, there's another Firebase uh, helper function called load tag posts, which we just add, give it a tag, and it'll give us the posts with that tag. So when I reload this, now you see that banana, okay? And so there's only one post with a banana tag, but if I go back to the main page and say, uh, here's another hashtag banana post, and click publish. So now there's two posts with that tag, okay? so. Um, and we can also, it'll do other users as well. So if I log out and I go to create a new account and this user I'll call orange and I'll say their email is uh, orange at orange.com and the password is 123123 and click sign up. Okay, so now I'm orange, but if I write about bananas, and I click publish again. So now we can see my user profile. Uh, because I'm a new user, I just have the default egg image. And here's all the posts tagged banana. Some of them are by banana, some of them are by orange. And here's my new user orange. Uh, you can see a link. Um, this is the user page. And if I click on the profile, now I could add an image here. Uh, let's see if I have any images on my computer. Um, I think I've used that one before, but that's okay. Let's use it again. I'll upload that image. It'll actually be good to see if this image works. Uh, I'll have a bio. I'm in orange. I'll update my profile. And so if I go back to the home page, okay, there's my user image. And if I go to orange, okay. 
And if I go to my view site users page, there's orange. I guess the site users aren't in any particular order. Um, so the profile page, I might want to change the sizing on that, but that looks okay. At least it works. And so there's orange's profile. Okay, so that's everything that I wanted to cover in this video. Um, so again, this is the last video we're gonna do adding new functionality to the site. Um, I have done other things in past semesters, so if there's other stuff that you would like to do with your site, um, let me know and um, I can uh, help you implement them. So other things that I've done in the past are a search box where you can search the posts, um, likes where users can like uh, or dislike posts, um, and then there you can do chat between users that are not public. Um, so there's a lot of other functionality that you could add. If you're interested in adding other functionality for your final, um, that's something that we could talk about. Um, so yeah, that's everything that you need to add for the site. Um, so no assignment for this, but you will be expected to have all that functionality in the final. Um, so there's not one specific assignment where I want you to go through this stuff, but you do need to update your site to include all of these functionalities because that will be part of um, the final uh, site. Um, so the next assignment will be your pitch for the final project. I'm going to make another video where I describe that in more depth. Um, so I'll post that uh, later in the week. Um, but you can start thinking about that if you want. Um, another thing, I'll go over this in the video as well, but you, as you're thinking about that, you may um, also want to consider working with a partner. I usually allow group projects for the final. Um, if you do want to do that, obviously we're in a slightly new situation where uh, we're doing distance learning, but you could communicate with your partner um, over email, or we could set up a uh, collaborate on Blackboard for you guys to talk, or you could also use the Discord app. Um, and so working with a partner is a good way to kind of share code and learn how to do different things. Um, with this class, we actually usually do like a group project for the final, but I think that's going to be a little bit hard to coordinate um, with everybody working asynchronously. Um, so I'm not going to do that this semester. Um, but if you do want to work with a group, let me know before you turn in the midterm. Um, once we start working on the final, you cannot uh, create a group then. So if you do want to work with a group, um, definitely let me know that before the, the midterm is due.